As if to drive these points home, a new wave of lying inquiries had also broken out by now. First, in Australia, where they refused to let Ron testify, a kangaroo court placed Scientology on trial. The initial verdict? Auditing and training were banned and could only be conducted in absolute secrecy. Next, a repressive inquiry was initiated in South Africa, and even England saw mounting pressure for government action. But however far apart these attacks, one thing was clear. At their source lay the same old partnership of psychiatrists and intelligence operatives, now joined under a new banner, the World Federation of Mental Health. Recognizing that Scientology was under direct attack from a powerful and international foe, and also recognizing that he needed research bases off the busy crossroads of the world, Ron made plans in late 1966 to found the Sea Organization. As a first decisive step, and only after he saw that others were successfully achieving the state of clear, he resigned his post as executive director. Then, purchasing the first Sea Org vessel and recruiting a team to man her, he set off for Las Palmas and the Canary Islands. Yes, he could have stayed in England and fought, and yes, he could have won these battles, as eventually they were all won. But as Ron said, to win the battles and leave the research incomplete was no victory. With the purchase of additional vessels, including the flagship Apollo, Ron now had the mobile and Fabian base where he could continue his OT research. Among the developments from his years aboard the Apollo was standard Dianetics, the primary rundown, word clearing, method one, the drug rundown, many new pre-OT levels, and most importantly, L10, L11, and L12. It was also on board this vessel that he delivered the Class 8 course to train the world's leading auditors, and the Flag Executive Briefing course to hat top Scientology administrators. But just as in previous periods of expansion resulting from Ron's technical breakthroughs, the early 1970s saw a frantic backlash to Scientology's growth. Once again, the enemy's main weapon was lies, this time fed into government files by Interpol, an international police force with roots in Nazi Germany. And although the lies that Interpol spread were plainly absurd, including a malicious CIA rumor that the flagship was itself a CIA vessel, the net result was serious. At one point during a stay in Portugal, a rabid mob was organized to stone the Apollo and throw Sea Org vehicles into the harbor. Only quick action by Ron and a well-aimed fire hose prevented worse damage and injury. But for all that was thrown at the flagship in terms of covert operations, the real keynote of these years was expansion. By the mid-1970s, fueled by word of Ron's new technical development, Scientologists began seeking services aboard the flagship. To meet this demand and to allow for the growth of the Sea Org, Ron decided to move ashore. By December 1975, he was directing the establishment of the new flag land base in Clearwater, Florida. With the Flag Service Organization and the 1977 acquisition of the Cedars of Lebanon complex, Scientology once again entered a new era of unprecedented growth. To help keep all running smoothly and bring technical standards to a new level, Ron began work on a series of technical instructional films to ensure the standard training of Scientology long into the future. He also now developed new grades and rundowns on both ends of the bridge, including new era Dianetics, which made clearing faster than ever. And he again resumed his advanced level research and broke through the second wall of fire, Ned for OTs. Of course, as Scientology continued to grow, the old pattern of attack also continued. In fact, through the next several years, new schemes to try and stop him. At least a dozen illegal wiretaps were placed on church telephones, and just as many infiltrators attempted to seize control of church management, there was even a plot to forge incriminating documents, plant them on church premises, 
conveniently stumble upon them in a raid, and then use that so-called evidence to replace church leaders with U.S. government-approved managers. To safeguard against such schemes, and so that Scientology was protected in the future, the Religious Technology Center was formed. Ron also took measures to preserve the tech in an imperishable form, so it would be available for eternity. And as always, despite the attacks, he continued on with his research. With that second wall of fire behind him, the upper reaches of OT were now available. He not only mapped the last steps of the bridge right to the top, but also looked back and streamlined the lower end as well. Thus came still more technical breakthroughs, which in turn led to still more orgs and still more Scientologists. All the while, the enemy died a little more. Today, Ron's technology reaches into all sectors of society. It reaches the man on the street in the inner cities and into the highest halls of learning. It reaches into China and Asia, where his researches began, and out across the Caribbean, where he had launched his first expedition. It even reaches into Moscow, where he had been invited to work so many decades earlier. The result of this expansion is that every man, woman, and child on Earth now has the opportunity to step on the bridge and go free. More than half a million people discover Scientology and start on the bridge each year. There are now more than a thousand Scientology organizations and groups in 74 countries. Millions are now leading drug-free lives. Problems of study and illiteracy are being addressed. And even criminals are regaining their self-respect and learning to lead honest lives. Man at last has the tools to rise from homo sapiens all the way to full OT. And how, in the face of vested psychiatric interests and millions of dollars in covert funds, did this all come about? One man, L. Ron Hubbard, found the answers. And through half a century of work, he never once lost sight of what he was doing and where he was going. Four decades ago, he had stood alone, one man with one book, against a vastly powerful and secret coalition. He had endured all they had thrown at him. And because he never gave up, our enemies now face us with the full power of his technology in our hands. Dianetics and Scientology are new, and Ron's purpose was one that no one had ever embraced. It was not to make men docile, God-fearing or obedient, but rather, as he wrote, to renew the spiritual life of an individual and make it possible for him to move forward into eternity. So, the next time you enter a course room and open a training pack, or sit down to pick up the cans, pause for a moment and consider this. All that we have is because Ron didn't quit. You now have the legacy of his tech. And make no mistake, although not with us in body, Ron is definitely with us. I have, through half a century of work, found the road out. I've done all I could to point the way. It is you who choose or not to achieve a higher state. Standard ethics will keep you and your friends on the straight road. Standard policy will give you a powerful organization expanding and prosperous. Standard tech will take you into states of beingness where nothing can strike you down. 
In this minute particle of time, we have the opportunity to reverse the downward spiral of life. It is you who will avail yourself of it or not. Will you take advantage of the carefully marked trail upward? I hope you do, my friends. For if you don't, it will be very lonely in the sky.